I'm Scott Wilcox, Chief Curator of Art Collections at the Yale Center for British Art, and I'm excited to share with you the extraordinary story of the capture of the Westmoreland and the subsequent disposition of its contents, the subject of an exhibition of over 140 objects at the Yale Center for British Art. The year is 1779. Britain and France are at war. On January 7th, a British merchant ship called the Westmoreland, sailing from Livorno, Italy, is captured by two French warships and taken to the port of Malaga in Spain. The Westmoreland carries a valuable and varied cargo of olive oil, anchovies, wheels of Parmesan cheese, and bales of silk. It also carries paintings, sculpture, books, and souvenirs being sent home by British grand tourists. For many elite young Englishmen, the grand tour is the capstone of a classical education. From several months to several years of travel on the European continent, it offers them an opportunity to acquire taste, polish, and sophistication, as well as valuable works of art and mementos of their time abroad. Once the Westmoreland arrives in Spain, it is declared a prize of war. The contents are sold to a Spanish trading company, which has no trouble disposing of the food and bales of silk, but has no idea what to do with the books, paintings, and sculpture. These sit in a warehouse in Malaga for four years until they come to the attention of King Carlos III. Carlos buys the lot and deposits the works of art in the Real Academia de Bellas Artes de San Fernando in Madrid, where they disappear into the collections and are forgotten for more than 200 years. In the late 1990s, a classical archaeologist named José María Luzón is researching a group of Roman urns in the National Archaeological Museum in Madrid. His investigations lead him to the library of the Real Academia and to inventories of the contents of a ship that was captured in the 18th century. He notices a peculiar PY inscription in a number of volumes in the library. Further digging reveals the name of the ship, the Westmoreland, and the meaning of PY, Presa Inglesa, the English prize. Little by little, the story of the Westmoreland comes into focus. By using the inventories made at the time of the ship's capture and correlating them with objects in the academia, Professor Luthon's team is able to reconstruct the contents of the ship. Even more amazingly, they're able to establish the identity of the individual owners. One of them is this man, Francis Bassett, heir to a tin mining fortune in Cornwall, England. This elegant portrait of Bassett was painted during his grand tour in Rome by Pompeo Batoni. It was on board the Westmoreland, along with one of the most exciting discoveries, a suite of six watercolors by the young English painter John Robert Cousins, purchased by Bassett. Cousins was one of the most significant British artists of the 18th century, and here we have previously unknown evidence of his style at the time of his first visit to Italy in 1776. Bassett was one of two tourists who were sending back complete sets of the etchings of Giovanni Battista Piranesi. In gratitude, Piranesi dedicated one of the plates of his publication to Bassett. He dedicated another plate to Bassett's tutor, William Sands, who was probably responsible for introducing Bassett to Piranesi. One of the interesting aspects of the Westmoreland material is the light that it sheds on the role of tutors in the Grand Tour. A significant number of works being sent to England on the Westmoreland were copies of old master paintings. The importance of the copy in the collecting culture of the Grand Tour is another focus of the exhibition. This copy of Guido Reni's Aurora belonged to Bassett. And this copy of Raphael's Madonna della Seggia belonged to George Legg, Viscount Lewisham, whose portrait by Pompeo Batoni was also on the Westmoreland. Copies after old masters were much sought after at the time and occupied a position between artwork and souvenir. Other objects on the Westmoreland are more purely souvenirs, such as this view of the Arch of Titus and this fan with a view of St. Peter's Basilica. Another copy, this time of a famous antique statue, was being sent to the Duke of Gloucester, brother of King George III, it is the head of the Medici Venus. In addition to works of art, the Westmoreland carried lavish books of prints to adorn a personal library back home. 
It also carried the guidebooks, dictionaries, and grammars used while traveling. Even pleasure reading to while away long hours on the road. This copy of the novel Tristram Shandy was in one of the crates belonging to Francis Bassett. Through these and other fascinating objects in the exhibition, the Westmoreland offers a time capsule from the 18th century, providing us with an unprecedented window into the important cultural phenomenon of the Grand Tour.